in conclusion, that is why I think everybody is wrong about female space marines. Thanks for watching. All right, cut. And I think that about does it for female space marines. What's the next video? Army painters speed paint. Oh yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah, when did they send this to us? January. Oh God, we're so late. Okay, um, Army Painter Speed Paint, Army Painter Speed Paint. Is Army Painter Speed Paint as speedy as it claims to be? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okie doke. Army Painter Speed Paint. Army Painter Speed Paint, go. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. The miniature painting verse has been inundated with thick, heavily pigmented wash type paints that can give you some pretty dramatic results really quickly. I've been using some Games Workshop contrast paints from time to time and I really like them. They help me to paint the clothing on these Katachan. I've also dabbled with Scale 75's Instant Color and those paints work great too. I used them on the Sister of Battle and it worked out great. It's good stuff. It's a technical paint that creates some decent value, darker in the nooks and crannies, and it pulls away from the corners and edges to give a nice edge highlight. The thing to remember about these paints is that they're not a one and done. It takes some trial and error and experience to figure out what they can do, and what steps to do afterwards to finish them properly. It's a smart idea. These paints won't win you any golden demons, but they can help a lot to get minis looking good and ready for the tabletop. Army Painter has supplied me with their new contender, Speed Paints, and I'm excited to give them a try. I've had some mixed results with Army Painter paints before. The colors dry a little satiny for my taste, but their black and white are really good, and I love their wash range, so I am very excited to give these a try. So without further ado, let's get this unboxing started. Just kidding, you don't need to see me take out 24 identical bottles. I've already unpacked everything and taken a look. Like washes, speed paints are in a unique spot where it's impossible to tell what they will look like just from looking at the bottles. What better way than on the caps? so that I can see what's what at a glance. I'm gonna test out every color on the caps, but I can't spray paint inside, so I'll have to go outside. I'm gonna spray one side with black and one side with the other, a classic Zenithal. I'll probably always use this stuff with the Zenithal Prime, so it makes sense to get that information right from the caps. Now I can test out every color in the set and set myself up for success later on when I can see exactly what I'm going to get from each color. In three, two, one, boom! Every color tested. And I can say that Plasma Bolt and Zealot Yellow have got me really excited. They're gorgeous. Although some colors are really, really dark, like Cloud Blue and Camo Cloak a little. So I have the colors and I know what they look like. It's time to take them for a spin. But I don't just want to paint something that'll work, like a fantasy knight or a zombie, because there's no challenge in that. They would just work perfectly because that is the perfect situation. Also, I don't really paint stuff like that. I really want to give these paints a challenge to see if they can displace other tools in my painting repertoire. Last year, I painted up this Rebel ATRT for the game Star Wars Legion, and I used lots of washes and regular old acrylic paints. It wasn't a quick paint job, but it didn't take too long either, and it looks really nice. So of course, I bought two more. These should really put this stuff to the test, as I am not going to just slap it on and let the paint do its thing. I'm going to see if I can replicate a paint job and see if this speed paint can speed up my painting too. And I can't ignore that Games Workshop contrast paint is going to be stiff competition, so I have an experiment lined up for that as well. And I'll also be delving into the speed paint controversy. But first, a little trip to a galaxy far, far away from a long time ago. Here we go. I'm gonna use a hard palette for this project because I don't know the paint very well, and so I'm worried about diluting the formula with a wet palette. But luckily for me, the top of my wet palette doubles as a dry palette. So this is what I'm gonna use for this paint project. First, I squirted some Gravelord's Gray onto my palette and mixed it with plenty of medium. Then I splashed it onto the legs and body of the walker. I used a brush soaked with thinner to push around the still wet paint. I really like that this speed paint has a long working time. It makes it much easier to get it perfect in the first try. Next up, some holy white on the cockpit. It looked really gray on the palette, but once it was on the model, it was much more subtle. And as I was applying it, I noticed lots of little bubbles that worried me, but they seemed to disappear once it's dried. Then it was time for the blaster. I used grim black with a little thinner. This has just a little bit of blue in it, and it makes for a really nice clean looking black. All right. Three colors on, and I am pretty impressed. It's looking real good. Next up, a little dry brushage. Uh. 
With my speed paint dry, I gave the whole model dry brushing with some white paint. The speed paint gave my recesses some nice shade, and this white paint will edge hide all the raised areas. Now to start working on the pilot, I mixed up three layers of green. Green black, pure green, and light green. I applied these in stripes to the pants to see if I could boost the contrast even further. It worked, but I think I could refine the process with more practice. I looked at my original model and saw that this new attempt was not green enough, so I glazed on more yellow-green speed paint and it helped. So I'm noticing that on the green contrast on his clothing, I feel like I can sort of see the white underneath. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I want to experiment and try glazing a very thin layer of brown onto his clothing and then put on the brown contrast and see if I'm going to be able to see this tan underneath. An undercoat is something that always affects future layers of paint, and with tools like speed paint it's probably even more important. I glazed on my brown and I definitely think it helped. Now I was closing in on finished. I watered down some tan paint and threw this over the legs to make them look dusty and dirty. Then I watered down some dark brown and selectively glazed this to the joints of the legs and feet. Acrylics are going over the contrast pretty good. I think the contrast gave me a really really good base to work up from. So now a few more acrylic details and I think this model will be looking sharp. I freehanded some grey triangles on the cheeks of the walker, some red stripes on the hood, I used a white grey mixture to clean up the red, then I used some tan to highlight his clothing and push the colors lighter. Then I did the same thing to his boots and gloves. Grey on the hydraulic pipes and finally some tan paint on the face. Then it was time for a little weathering. I took a sponge and some white paint and did a little stippling. Then the last step was pigments. I don't think the rebels get many opportunities to clean their walkers, so I really caked it on. I am loving it. Ba da ba ba ba. Ah, it looks pretty darn indistinguishable from the one I painted in the past and the old one I painted with washes and regular old acrylics. I think the contrast really helped. Man, if this one wasn't base, I think it would be pretty hard to actually tell which one was done with which types of paints. Really, really nice. Most of the colors in the range are decent, but some of the colors are a little bit really dark, especially Hive Dweller Purple. It's so dark it looks like normal acrylic paint. So I ran a little experiment. I tried pure purple, a 50-50 mix of purple and medium, and then mostly medium with a little purple, and it lightened up really nicely. The colors seemed to be very workable. I'm liking this paint. It does what it says on the tin. But is that enough for me to want to use it? Maybe. It's called speed paint, and if it really is fast, then I think it will be something that will replace other paints in my collection. I have a third ATRT, time to put that name to the test. I prepared myself for speed painting. My timer was ready, and I wanted this walker done fast. I tried another little experiment. I airbrushed on some green and tan onto his clothing ahead of time to see if this would help keep my tone saturated with the color I wanted. It's always good to have some experience under your belt, and this is the third one of these suckers I've done, so I know exactly what I'm doing. And so I threw the paint onto the mini. The speed paint makes for a really nice base, especially for the Star Wars models, with all those little details. Greebling is what they call it in the biz. I worked quickly and precisely, and it worked out great! In no time at all, the model was finished and to a really nice standard. I am very satisfied. This model rocks. I've been sitting on these suckers for months as I didn't want to commit hours and hours to them. But just over an hour each? That's awesome. I finished this sucker in an hour and 10 minutes, and I think the contrast paint helped a bunch. When I painted this original guy, I think it took about 5 hours. I think I did it in one evening, and then this guy probably took around 3, but I also lost plenty of time to filming and documenting my work. This guy was quick. I'm really excited to take this paint and try it on some of my other Star Wars Legion models, as I have a little bit of a pile of shame growing, but this looks dope. Games Workshop Contrast Paint works wonders on high detail intricate stuff, but not all Games Workshop minis are like this. Some are big and simple and smooth like Space Marines. In contrast on Space Marines, the thing that everybody wants to try them on looks really bad. Space Marines are super popular, and so the real make or break will be to see how does this stuff look over a super soldier. Let's try it out. I have two Space Marines, the perfect candidates for a head to head battle between Army Painter Speed Paint and Games Workshop Contrast. First, I primed the models black and gave them a zenithal of white paints. Then it was time for the trials. I tried all the army painter greens to find one that matched Games Workshop, and Camel Cloak did the job. I slimed the models with their respective green tones. If you can believe it, the paint felt very similar as they were going on. It's like a thick wash. You can see instantly what the paint wants to do, and it's important to work quickly and push and pull the paint where you want it to end up. It's not magic, it's a tool, and you have to work at it. 
And you know what else likes to work? That's right, the Eons Battle Patreon. Over there we have high quality terrain STLs, viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon to get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch, link in the description. I also found the Army Painter equivalent of Games Workshop Snakebite leather and applied that to the holsters of these Marines. Well, if you can believe it, the Games Workshop contrast paint looks really bad. It's not that bad, but it's so patchy. It does a good job of pulling away from the edges, but it doesn't really matter if it leaves a mottled, mushy appearance everywhere else. Games Workshop contrast feels like a wash, but it dries quick. It's hard to get a good, even coat before it starts to harden. I thought that maybe a little paint retarder would slow the drying time down, but I ran that experiment and nope, it looks exactly the same. So that's what the paint looks like. So I went ahead and finished the model, and once it was done and I've dry brushed it and highlighted it, I think it looks okay. I can still see the patchiness, but it turned out fine. It took some time though. Adding more paint always adds a lot more time at the painting desk. Army Painter Speed Paint went on smooth. I was worried about all those bubbles, but they pop and disappear when it dries. And Speed Paint has a nice long working time. I think that's what let it get such a smooth finish once the model's dried. The model was looking too dark, so I tried again adding a few drops of Speed Paint Medium and it worked like a charm to lighten the colors up just a little bit. Now Army Painter Speed Paint has a bit of a controversy surrounding it, and that is that the paint can rehydrate. If you add more water, the paint becomes soft and workable again. I don't think that's too big a deal, that's kind of what paint does, but it does give me an idea that I can take advantage of the process and simplify the painting steps. I wanted to see if I could pull off some paint and get a more pronounced edge highlight. I think it worked, it looks a little lighter to me. At this point the speed paint was about 3 days old, so it was pretty good and dry, but my paintbrush still turned green. Now for his weapons. I put on some black paint and then used a damp brush to pull it away, and this gave me a really nice effect in about 5 seconds. I could see with a little practice this being a really quick way to get nice looking scratches and weathering. Then I did the same thing with red, applying it to the gun and then rehydrating the paint and giving it some scratches. Super easy and effective. I did the same thing with his chest emblem, putting on black speed paint, letting it dry, and then rubbing it off. It sticks in the recesses but comes off the raised areas. I think the Army Painter Speed Paint Marine looks awesome. I am very happy with the results. It took about 3 minutes to get him from base coated to finished. The Games Workshop Contrast Marine might look better maybe? I think it's personal preference, but I did get carried away a little spending 20 minutes perfectly glazing the red parts of his weapons. And he ended up too lime green after all the highlighting I did to hide the patchy contrast base coat. The Speed Paint Marine is solid and I can't imagine anybody not being satisfied with the results. And it's my first one ever. My head is already swimming with more experiments and techniques I want to try out with this new stuff. I watched a ton of Army Painter Speed Paint reviews of this controversial rehydrating problem, and I just don't think it's an issue. Yes, you can get it wet and take off a little bit of paint, but it is very consistent and predictable. It's not like the paint just falls off. I think it's a feature more than a bug, and I think Army Painter Speed Paint's controversial rehydrating flaw will actually become its best asset. So do I recommend this box? No. Sorry Army Painter, but that is not because the paint is bad. They're actually really good, but I always recommend not buying large paint sets. I am of the firm belief that if you have cash to burn, you should buy games and models, and you should be strategic with supplies. Big paint sets give you the colors you need and a bunch you don't, and that's a waste. It's better to pick up the colors you need as you need them and slow grow your collection. Also, if you have every color right at your fingertips, you aren't likely to try mixing and blending to get the tones you want, which is a really important thing to expanding your painting knowledge. If you want to pick something up, I would recommend the Little Speed Painter Starter Set. It's a good collection of colors. And I am really liking Plasmic Bolt, Slaughter Red, and Camo Cloak. Thanks again to Army Painter for sending these paints and helping me to finally finish my triple ATRT spam list so that I can finally beat Sean and his battle droids. Thanks for watching.